say about three main ingredients of this Penrose's uh, conformal cyclic cosmology. The three background facts from there, and actually four, and so far I only said about one. So today I try to say about two others. So the first one is the fact that everybody knows, namely that null geodesics in space times are uh, conformal objects. So uh, I say the two space times, and remember that for me, space time is a four dimensional manifold equipped with a, a metric of Lorentzian signature. Uh, so I say that two space times uh, mg and m hat g hat are conformally related if there exists mm, a diffeomorphism from m to m hat such that the metrics the, 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 the metrics are related by by a scale which here i write as e to, to gamma where gamma is at the differential differentiable function on manifold m so <clears throat> That's 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 that just for terminology. What does it mean that two guys are conformally related? And now one one can see what's going on with the uh, Levi-Civita uh, Levi connection uh, associated with metric G when one, trans one, one transforms it conformally. So the formula for the Levi-Civita uh, uh, connection coefficients hat uh, were compared to unhatted is uh, uh, like this, where, where this uh, vector uh, epsilon nu is just uh, the, the gradient of the function epsilon. And in this way, one can see that a geodesic equation uh, in unhatted metric looks like this. And if we just replace this unhatted uh, levi civita connection coefficients by the hatted ones, then you will get equation in this form. And one can see that, that this can be also interpreted as a uh, equation for a geodesic provided that this red term is vanishing. And this red term vanishes, for example, when, when, the, when the geodesic is, is null. So in a way, this shows that a uh, Null uh, geodesic is is uh, in metric G is also a null geodesic in the metric uh, G hat. What what happens mainly the 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 affine parameterization changes or the pa parameterization. So one equation is reparameterized with respect to the other when you have null geodesic in one metric is also null geodesic in the other one, okay? So that's the first important fact. So in a way, null geodesics are conformal objects. And this calculation actually here is independent on the dimension, uh, but, but, but I only am concerned with, the, with, with space time. So that's the first fact. Null geodesics are conformal objects. So, <clears throat> The next notion that I need, and is the crucial notion for this entire uh, Penrose CCC, is something which is called conformal compactification of a space time. And this is the notion introduced by Roger Penrose. And he introduced it not ad hoc, not as a mathematician. He needed this in the process of making mathematically correct theory of gravitational radiation. So the uh, physical motivation for this conformal compactifications introduced by Penrose is really gravitational radiation theory. And it was motivated by troutman bondy way of associating energy to gravitational waves. Uh, so let me, let me say a few words about that, that. In Einstein's theory, gravitational field is described in terms of the Riemannian, uh, Riemann tensor which decomposes on, onto its trace, which is called Ricci, and uh, Ricci tensor, and its totally traceless part, which is Y tensor. 
And schematically, one can write that Riemann tensor is just a sum of Weil and Ricci. And it is Ricci, which is totally determined, determined by the Einstein equations. So, because remember that schematically, this, the, the Einstein equation says that on the left-hand side is essentially Ricci, which is compared to the, to the uh, energy momentum tensor. And so how, somehow Ricci tensor, which is the part of Riemann, is determined by the by by by, by the matter matter content of 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 of, of space time. On the other hand, the, the, the remaining part of curvature, which is file tensor, is essentially not determined. is is not determined at all by 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 the energy momentum tensor. And one may think about while as the free gravitational part of the curvature. So somehow Ricci is governed by is totally determined by by the by the by the Einstein equations, whereas Weil is something free, so, so it is not, yeah. So what is remarkable is that Weil tensor in proper, in proper uh, uh, placement of indices is conformally invariant. So this free part of the curvature uh, is, is, is conformally invariant, okay? So let me let me now. This picture is from Roger Penrose's paper. So I I started my talk saying that 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 these conformal comp compactifications are are motivated by the theory of radiation. So if you want, in, in this theory of radiation, they, they, they had a problem if gravitational waves carry energy, and to 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 to, to to answer such such a, such a, such a question in the in the realm of, of general relativity theory, you would like to say you would like to ask if Einstein equations admit waves which carry energy, gravitational waves, and how how to handle such a problem? So such a problem to handle is one should one should associate somehow energy to gravitational waves by by mathematical means so what 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 one could do one could take a space like hypersurface and one can associate an energy to space like hypersurface by by simply uh, integrate some expression of mass density over this this uh, space like hypersurface and if you if you hear you have you have roger just depicted let's say uh, so time goes in, 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 from, from down to up. And here Roger depicted some, some uh, uh, evolution of, of lump of a mass. And then this mass starts to emitting gravitational waves, right? So if you, so if you first you try to associate energy to, 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 to space like hypersurface sigma one, then you associate energy to uh, hypersurface sigma two, and then let's let's call this energy m one, this energy m two, and then if you subtract m one to m two, the net thing is this: what would be uh, uh, radiated by the gravitational waves. The problem is that that this this uh, since since this s one and s two goes up to spatial infinity, then essentially M1 will be the same as M2 because, because all the waves cross the surface surface S2. So somehow it is it is not a proper way of, of defining uh, energy of gravitational waves by, by integrating over space-like surfaces. What one should do, one should associate mass rather to, to, to surfaces that are, let's say, asymptotically null. So if you have, a, you, you should follow simply gravitational radiation and see what go, what's going on between, in, in the infinity, between, between the asymptotically null surface. That's the net energy is just emitted up to infinity. And for, so for waves, what is important is this what, they carry along null geodesics to infinity to the place in space time where null geodesics end. So one would like to see what's going on in this place where null geodesics end. 
So Penrose's idea then is to introduce a boundary to space-time M whose points constitute future and past endpoints to each null geodesics in M, M. So he says, okay, to analyze radiation, I would like to have boundary of a space-time consisting of all points where null geodesics ends. And again, because, because this, this gravitational radiation goes on null geodesics, only conformal properties matter here. So that's, that's, the, that's the physical motivation of introducing this conformal compactification of Penrose. And uh, here is the formal definition. So we say that the four dimensional Lorentzian manifold, MG, with boundary uh, is a conformal compactification of a space time, MG, if there exists a diffeomorphism from M to the interior of this M hat and a function omega on M hat such that if you push forward the metric G from M to, uh, uh, by, 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 by means of this diffeomorphism, diffeomorphism, then G hat is related to G by this conformal scale with omega function on m hat such that it is zero on the boundary, but its gradient is not zero at the boundary. So, okay, so that's, that's, that's the definition. So you have, you have two four dimensional manifolds, which are Lorentzian, you have mg and you have m hat g hat. m hat is a manifold with boundary. And then you say that m hat g hat is a conformal compactification of mg if you have a conformal diffeomorphism from m to m to interior of m hat such that this function omega vanishes uh, at the boundary of m hat and it is non zero on the boundary okay so that's the definition and here are uh, here is the simplest example Let's start with two-dimensional Minkowski space, space-time. Okay, I said that space-time should be four-dimensional, but for a moment it will be two-dimensional. Uh, two-dimensional Minkowski, just to start the simplest thing. And I, I am very sorry when preparing these notes, I, by education, I always work, work in signature plus with free minus, but my research as general relativist, I always work with, 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 with signature minus and free pluses. And I'm totally confused which I'm doing. And so I, 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 I'm apologizing for my notes today because parts of them will be in signature uh, plus, minus, 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 and parts of them will be in signature minus, plus, plus, plus. I'm very sorry for this, but I, I, I realized that I used the wrong signature only when ending my slides. So I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry. And I was preparing. And the national tool doesn't matter. Yeah, it's, it's sort of matters, <laughs> sort of matters because then the cosmological constant sign changes and it, it, it sort of matters. One should be very careful, but, but, but for a moment, let's say, I, I will tell you what will happen. So I, I apologizing for this. I frantically was making these transparencies and it, I had no time, so I, I didn't, Okay, so I warn you. So we start with two-dimensional Minkowski spacetime with coordinates t x, t is time, x is space, and then one changes coordinates to this to this null coordinates u twiddle and 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 v twiddle, and if t and x goes from minus infinity to plus infinity, then u twiddle v twiddle goes from minus infinity to plus infinity, and after this change. In new coordinates, the Minkowski metric looks like this. So u and v are null coordinates. And uh, this essentially is the change which is on this picture here that you have tx coordinates in Minkowski space time, t is time, here is x. And then this u twiddle and v twiddle coordinates are uh, like this. They, they go in, in, in 45 degrees with respect to t and x. And essentially, they are called null because, of course, 
the, the straight lines under 45 degrees on this Minkowski spacetime corresponds to null geodesics, okay? So in particular, uh, yeah, in, in particular, U equal constant or, 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 or V equal constant is a null geodesic on this space. Okay, but now what one does, one, one, one somehow wants to, to tra transform this entire R4 onto an open set in R4 by changing coordinates into, uh, by changing co co coordinates U twiddle and V twiddle to tangents of u and v. And this uh, transforms the entire uh, Minko two-dimensional Minkowski spacetime onto interior of a diamond, like on the picture here, right? So that's the, the entire Minkowski spacetime is transformed into a diamond where u and v goes from minus pi half to pi half and one has the entire diamond and entire R2 is just uh, transformed into the, the interior of this diamond. And one can see that this transformation is actually conformal to the metric du dv because you get, uh, you get if you just insert u twiddle and v twiddle to be these tangents, then the metric g becomes in these new coordinates uv as du dv with cosine square u cosine square v down here, right? So now what one does, one adds the boundary of this uh, of this of this of this of this diamond, and now one essentially have a transformation from let's say Minkowski spacetime like this when u, u twiddle and v twiddle, twiddle parameters go from minus infinity to plus infinity to a interior of this diamond and this diamond has a boundary and one can see that on this, uh, the, 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 if I change, takes us g hat, this metric to the u dv, then one precisely has has uh, one precisely realizes the conformal compactification in sense of the definition of Minkowski spacetime that of this two-dimensional Minkowski spacetime that one has a, one has a conformal transformation from from this entire R two with coordinates u twiddle v twiddle to this diamond with a boundary with metric g hat being like this and then there is this function omega which vanishes precisely at the boundary as it should be. And this function is not, its gradient is not, is not uh, zero at the boundary. So somehow this is, this is an example of how to, comp of, of how to, that such compactifications as in this definition exist. For example, I gave you a compactification of two dimensional Minkowski spacetime uh, explicitly here in this formula. What is uh, Pavel, shall we worry about singularities at the corners? Yes, that's what that that would that would that, that will be. You, I, I never said that this function should be smooth, right? This so yes, yeah, so that's 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 what we that's 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 precisely what I want to tell now. So if you just if you just look at this example, uh, one can analyze this boundary that, that that we get here. So the compactified uh, two-dimensional Minkowski space, space has a boundary with the following components. So the first part of the com components are called sky plus, sky plus. So this is sky plus here. So it is the, 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 the interval from without this point I zero and without this I plus. So this open interval, this sky plus here and sky plus here, it is called sky because it's script I. It's Penrose's letter script I, and he calls it scry, and it's scry plus. And this is the, these are the points where null geodesics ends, or null curves end. If you have a null curve or asymptotically null curve, all the null curves end on this scry plus, okay? So this is called null infinity in the future. As well, one has the other one, which is just the scry minus, and these are just, these, these just the space where all the 
null curve starts their existence. So this is called null infinity in the past. So this is so these boundaries, as you understand, these are just these are just infinities in the space time. And then 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 the then the causal structure of this infinity is quite quite non-trivial even for Minkowski space. So there is this scry plus and scry plus scry, there are these scry pluses where the where, where null curves end. There are sky minuses where null curve starts. And there are these points that Boris is asking. And there is a point which is called I0 here. Actually, there are two of these points. And these I0s are representing spatial infinity. So the spatial infinity ends either in this point or in this point. So it is like x going to infinity in whatever so whatever whatever whatever, whatever asymptotically spatial hypersurface you will take it ends at this point i0 and it's called space like space like infinity and moreover there are two other points i plus and i minus it is it, these are the points where 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 where, where time like uh, that asymptotically time-like curves end. So if you have a curve, which is let's say time-like all the time, it starts at I minus and it ends at I plus. But if you have any curve that is that starts as being time-like, then it starts at I minus and it's ending I plus. So all the time-like curves starts here and here, all the space-like hypersurfaces start here and here. And for example, now, Null geodesic is a straight line going under the 45 degrees here, or straight line like this. And now there is there is a curve that starts here, does something, and ends here is asymptotically now. So it starts, it just reaches the cone, light cone at the very at the at the, at the very end of its existence. So moreover, you only say you only see that that uh, that this note that this i plus describes i plus and i minus are null hypersurfaces so the the this the the describes are null okay that's that's essentially what one see on this example of compactification of mintoski space time in two dimensions okay Boris, do you want to ask something, or I, 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 okay. I explain everything here. So yeah. let, let's do let's let's do it. Let's do the same for four. Uh, Pavel, 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 yes. Just uh, basic question. It's true that all two dimensional Minkowski spaces uh, are conformally equivalent, right? All two dimensional. Two, yes, correct. Okay. okay. Correct. But but this okay. 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 So let let's do the same for four dimensional Minkowski space time. So I just wrote this four dimensional Minkowski space time again in wrong signature according to my setting. I I I, I put it in 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 kind of um, this spherical coordinates r theta r theta high. I wrote it should be phi. It doesn't matter. And time is the t. The time is here t, right? So this 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 thing here is just a standard metric on on two-dimensional sphere of radius one. And here, t coordinates goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. R is greater than or equal zero, and theta phi are usual uh, spherical coordinates. So now we do essentially the same as before. We change, we pass to this, this null coordinates, you twiddle and then make this tangent kind of transformation. And this brings this Minkowski metric G to be this thing divided by omega square where omega is just this. So again, one has, one has that, that, that one can introduce metric G hat related to G by means of, of this function conformal scale omega, which vanishes at the boundary because now boundary is essentially the same. So V and U goes from minus pi half to plus pi half, but because 
because of this uh, uh, r greater than zero, then u minus v must, that's a wrong thing here, u minus, v minus u must be greater than zero. So the resulting picture of this conformal compactivity is as follows, that you have just, as before, u coordinates and v coordinates, now, but now u minus v must be, v minus u must be greater than zero because here is the r equals zero line in the old coordinates. So the picture looks like this in uv coordinates and every point on this picture is a two-dimensional sphere. So that's the essentially conformal compactification of Minkowski spacetime in, in, four, in four dimensions. They have scry plus, scry minus, there is i zero, which is just a, a, a space like infinity and i minus i plus, which are just like time like infinities in the past and in the future. So the picture looks like this, two-dimensional picture looks like this, where, where every point here is a two-dimensional sphere. Okay. Uh, Pavel, uh, may, may I ask you, so, so uh, specification of uh, Misha's question. So uh, there are probably different conformal complexifications, right? You show one conformal complexification, like in a two-dimensional case, but yeah. there should be lots of. So, somehow, yeah, so, so, so that's, that's the that's the point. So the, the the actually this question this question that you are having is the is essentially you are asking for the following: if this conformal compactification is something conformal, if if it is if it is like conformal notion, so somehow we will pass to we will pass to this to to, to this question in a moment. So the, the the thing is that that what I only want. I want, as you see in my, uh, why it doesn't work. As like, you, like there's no completeness, right? As, so as, you, see, as you see in my definition, what I, what I simply say, I have a space time and I want to make, I make, want to find a conformal compactification. And a conformal comp compactification is just associating to this manifold, a manifold with boundary that satisfies these rules, okay? And can, I, can, can, can you have one point compactification? Say it again. Can you have one point com compactification? Uh, no, because as you say, it is diffeomorphism, so you cannot. No, 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 no. Complement, complement is one point. Boundary is one point. Uh, I think that it is impossible to make it like as you want. That the boundary will be one point. It's, it's, it's impossible. It, it has to have this, this, this causal structure as it, 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 uh, uh, as it has, okay? The, the point is that you are, not you are not considering entire conformal class. You start with a given Lorentzian manifold. You start with a given Lorentzian manifold and you want to associate to it conformal compactification. I claim that Maybe this, this omegas may be different, but the causal structure of this boundary for a given M is essentially the same. Okay, so the picture, the, the, the essentially topological picture like, like this one or like, like, uh, like this other one, like this one will be the same. Okay, but we, we will pass to this in a moment. The, 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 the thing which is, which is important here is that, that this cries are now hypersurfaces. And let me make another trivial observation, which is trivial. Note that Minkowski spacetime is a solution of vacuum Einstein equations with vanishing cosmological constant. Okay, so it's a trivial solution, but it's a solution of vacuum Einstein equations with cosmological constant being zero. Okay. So uh, here I, I, I just show you the, 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 the comp conformal conf Penrose diagram. Okay, this conformal compactification when, when depicted in this two-dimensional picture is, is called Penrose diagram for a, for a given spacetime. So here is the conformal compactification of a maximal analytic extension of Schwarzschild solution. So you have Schwarzschild solution. So uh, usually Schwarzschild solution is in this spherical coordinates given by Schwarzschild and then the, the, the Schwarzschild solution 
uh, in Schwarzschild coordinates are essentially for r greater than zero is this region one of the, compa of the compactification of maximal analytic extension of, of Schwarzschild. Then region r smaller than to m in Schwarzschild is just this region. Here is a singularity, uh, which, is, which is sort of like, it is part of the boundary, but it, this doesn't exist because the, 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 the metric is singular here. So that's, that's singularity. And one, two region is just the Schwarzschild region R greater than M, R smaller than M. And then if, if you just, it, it was proven by Kraskal that if you want to maximally analytically extend this, then you get another regions like this, that, that essentially this reflection of region one in here and region two in here. And so that's that's the that's the diagram, Penrose diagram for the maximal for the conformal compactification of the Schwarzschild solution in its maximal mm, maximally extended version. And again, here you have sky plus sky minus. Here is a horizon. Here is a horizon. So, for example, if you are in this region, since aha, so these diagrams have always this 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 property that that because it was conformal. So somehow that the, that the uh, null uh, geodesics or light rays, light rays are just like under the uh, are straight lines uh, at the degree 45 degrees with respect to the horizontal line. So for example, here, the, this line, which stays here is R equal to M. And in, in particular, you can see that everything which is here like at this point, the future light cone of this point is just ending on singularity. So the information from this point can never be seen by the observer here. Even if you are here, the light cone is just there. And this, everything which, every evolution of this point goes, ends in the singularity. So somehow this region below this line is not visible uh, okay, the information the information from there uh, cannot be seen by a guy here. The guy from here, his light cones like this, can choose his 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 destiny. Either he will just end up in uh, I plus, but he is very adventurous. He can he can reach the singularity, right? So the, the, this shows that this 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 uh, Penrose diagrams are very nice, very nice. for visualization. Of, of this what's going in a given space time on some picture that is just uh, well depicted on a, on, on, on a piece of, 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 of piece of paper. So again, here, every point in this, in this diagram is a two dimensional sphere. And essentially you can see the entire, entire um, uh, uh, causal structure of Schwarzschild black hole. So for example, being here, you, 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 if you are not adventure, adventurous, you will end up at, at I plus <coughs> just future null infinity. Now, for example, this, this picture is also very nice to, to analyze radiation because what you, what, 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 what you really do, and this, for example, was something what Hawking did. He just put some uh, radiation here and this radiation was evolving. So he knew what is radiation at the initial hypersurface on sky minus, sky minus, which is just the, 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 the place where uh, past null geodesic starts. So he looked at radiation here and then he looked at radiation here and he observed that here is more than here and he interpreted this as the fact that, that the black hole is just emitting, uh, emitting radiation, okay? Anyhow, so the, this, this, these cry guys are very good to analyze asymptotic uh, properties of space-time in radiative regime, because you simply look at what's going on at sky minus and what's going on at sky plus. And again, you see here that, that in Schwarzschild solution, these scries are null hypersurfaces. And of course, again, Schwarzschild is less trivial 
solution of vacuum Einstein equations with vanishing cosmological constant. Okay, so here is a, a Penrose diagram for, 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 for Oppenheimer Snyder collapse. So this green line here, let's say, is the is the is the is the surface of a collapsing star. So actually the star is starting to collapse somewhere here. So star is, is, is collapsing at certain moment it it passes the horizon. And the 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 the, the Penrose diagram for for, 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 for for this evolution of mass uh, which eventually produces Schwarzschild outside is just like this. So again scry is scries are now hypersurfaces because close to the to the scries the there is no energy momentum tensor because the energy momentum tensor is only related to interior of the, of the of, of let's say the star and so somehow scries in the vicinity of scries the solution is a Schwarzschild solution which again is a vacuum solution with without cosmological constant. And the next one is just the, 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 the Penrose diagram, Penrose diagram for, 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 for Kerr solution. So uh, yeah, perhaps one should, one should start here. So the, the Kerr solution goes, maximal analytic extension of Kerr solution goes up to infinity. So the diagram is infinite and it is, it is just uh, constructed with with these regions like this one, this four, and these two. So it is like this, 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 that, that, and the story repeats. So now in, in care solution, you, you, have a, you have kind of, you have two horizons. You have a horizon here, you have horizon here. And when you enter black hole, because now singularity in care solution is time-like, you can simply avoid singularity. And if you believe that there is maximal analytic extension of care, you can go to another uh, universe number two and start the story again. And you even entering black hole, you can just escape. That's what, that's what this picture shows. And this is, Penrose diagram for Kerr solution for maximal analytic extension of Kerr solution. Again, here, scry plus, scry minus, and scry plus are now hypersurfaces because, not, not because, but because the, the Kerr is a solution, vacuum solution of Einstein equations with vanishing cosmological constant again. So now let's do something with non vanishing cosmological constant, let's say. So let's try conformal comp compactification of the, the Sitter space. So the Sitter space is just next to me. Oh, one question, Pavel. Can you yes. go back one slide? Yes. In those squares, what, what, what's the significance of those little kinks in the squares? You, what do you mean, these red things here? No, no, the green, the, the little bumps. Ah, because it's the, the, I, think, no, 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 I think that the that the guy that was depicting, it is not me, I was I was in a hurry, so I took it from the uh, internet. He wanted to show that there are tiles, that these are sort of tiles that you can just tile up to infinity. It's, it's, it's not physics. Okay. <laughs> it's not physics. It just says that you, 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 you have a tile thing like this, right? But it's time direction, probably. Uh, no, no. Time, di time direction is just... Well, but yes, it's a long now. Yeah, yes, that's how... So time direction is always up. Now directions are just at the degrees 45 degrees. What is important here is that the horizon, that the, that the singularity in care is very different than singularity in Schwarzschild because singular, causal structure of singularity in Schwarzschild, as you remember, was such that, that, that the singularity was space-like. In care, in care, singularity is time-like. And the, another thing which is important here, as in all the other cases, was that is that the scries were null hypersurfaces. Okay, so let's try now the sitter. So the sitter is essentially similar to, to, to Minkowski because the sitter, 
the sitter is uh, Lorentzian four manifold of constant uh, scalar curvature, right? Of constant curvature, of constant curvature. Sorry, is a is a it's a it's a Lorentzian four-dimensional space type of constant curvature as Minkowski is of constant curvature equals zero. So the sitter is of constant curvature, uh, constant and positive. And how you realize the sit the sitter space as a global manifold? It can be understood as a quadric in R five. So you have a quadric like this with here should be one over h square. I don't know it is y square. It's one over h square, where h is constant. Okay, so you you consider you consider this quadric Q in R five with coordinates capital T, capital X, capital Y, capital Z, capital W. Okay, h is constant, and here should be one over h square. H square. So this 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 uh, quadric uh, acquires a Lorentzian metric from the five-dimensional Minkowski metric, which is, ah, should be, yeah, you see, you see that I was just like trying my best to, 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 to do this, to do this signature correctly. It should be minus dt squared plus dx squared plus dy squared plus dz squared plus dw squared. It should be minus here, minus as it is here. And now I am in this signature that I always wanted. So now I'm in signature, I have a five-dimensional Minkowski space with uh, signature minus plus 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 plus. Okay, and now in this in this in this five-dimensional R five with this metric, I consider this quadric, and then this quadric, when one parameterizes it properly, and that's what I'm doing here. I parameterize this thing properly, and this is a proper parametrization, then you can say that Tx, Y, Z, and W parametrizes with this way, satisfy this equation. So it is a good parametrization of this quadric. And then in these coordinates, which is now T, R, theta, and phi, one see that the metric reduces to the metric on the hyperquadric uh, looking like this, okay? So now this metric, you can recognize that here. So that so that so then this Q, uh, which is which is a four-dimensional four-dimensional manifold, acquires a Lorentzian metric of now signature minus plus plus plus, and one can recognize very easily that here is the standard metric on a free sphere. So that's that's the metric of of. Of something which is called the sitter space. So you can think about the sitter space as a quadric like this in flat Minkowski space time in dimension five. And then when you just look at the metric, the metric looks like minus dt square. Here is a metric on a three dimensional sphere. And here is just this uh, scale factor of this, of this three dimensional sphere metric which is essentially written in terms of t coordinates as a cosh of this uh, variable t okay so now so that's the metric of of of, of the, the sitter space so now we want to make conformal compactification of this i want to make conformal compactification of this thing so the, the what what i do i just if i just uh, uh, pull out this term cosh h t divided by h square in front of everything, then I will have here metric of, of, on a sphere. I here will be dt over this thing squared. So it, it, it immediately tells you that one can introduce variable tau, which is just the inverse of this h dt. And then in this variable tau, the, uh, the sitter metric looks like this. There is this cosh, and this in this variable tau, it is simply nothing but the Minkowski metric. So this is just Minkowski metric here, and there is this 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 cosh, which is which is now I have variable tau, so I should I should simply inverse t to tau, and now the the if I call this metric g hat, then I will have precisely the 
conformal compactification of, of the sitter. Now, if one just integrate this thing here, this thing can be integrated. I cannot, but my mathematica could. So one see that tau is related to t like this, this arcus tangents and hyperbolic tangent of this. So when t, which was time in the, the sitter space go from minus infinity to plus infinity, then this hyperbolic tangent goes from plus minus one and therefore tau goes from plus minus pi. So somehow what this thing does, it just stretches time from minus infinity to plus infinity to the region from minus pi to plus pi, right? So it, it, this, this, this entire uh, real line of time is now stretched to the interval minus pi plus pi. And then one, one sees that this function omega, which relates g hat and, 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 and g behaves like this. So when, uh, when tau goes to plus minus pi, omega goes to zero. So that's precisely conformal compactification. But now, as you see, the compactification, what I did, I compactified time. So now the hypersurface tau equal plus minus pi are space-like. So now the conformal, com the, the picture of the conformal com compactification looks like this, that I compactified time from minus pi to pi. So the entire, entire the sitter space is just in this cylinder here, this thing, I, I cannot draw a three-dimensional sphere, so I only draw a circle. So I have a cylinder now, uh, interval from minus pi to pi with minus pi and pi included times a three-dimensional sphere. And this is how the compactified, the sitter space time looks like. So now the sky minus is here, sky minus is plus, sky, sky plus is here, but now scries are space-like hypersurfaces. So the, what, what, what's going on, so the null geodesics are still under the 45 degrees here, but of course, so I'm saying that this, the, this, the, this is the, this bottom of this, of this can is the place where null geodesic starts, but now they go under 45 degrees like this, like spiral here, and they end up on this place. So it is why, so it is essentially, I, I don't know how to say it, maybe it is topology that makes that scry now is space-like, right? So it is, now, now geodesics are still under 45 degrees, but because of topology then spiral, and if they started here, if they started on a space-like hypersurface, they will end on space-like hypersurface. And it is why now scries are space-like, okay? And this is, the, this is the crucial point for this entire Penrose's uh, conformal cyclic uh, cosmology that compactified the sitter space has Christ being space like. Okay. Uh, well. uh, so, so you can ask why Scry of Minkowski is different than scry of, 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 of the sitter. And as, as, as we already noticed here, right, this the sitter guy, that's the sitter metric. And the sitter metric is conformally flat. It is just related is by this factor related to a conformal metric. So this metric G, 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 to, the, to the flat metric, this metric G hat is simply Minkowski metric, right? So, but, but, the, but, the, but the starting point here was G. G was the metric which was just, which was just the given for you, which is just the sitter metric. And you wanted to make it conformal compactification. Nevertheless, and, and then you actually made this conformal comp compactification with, with the metric G hat being Minkos, simply Minkowski metric. But now this metric, this Minkowski metric is just like, uh, only part, this Minkowski sp sp space time, which is just the compactification of the sitter, is simply a part of this huge cylinder, which is just Minkowski, right? Something like this. Okay, so, 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 you can, you, you can ask why scry of Minkowski space time is different than scry, scry of the sitter. And, and here you just, uh, 
the, the first thing that differs the sitter from Minkowski is that the sitter is a solution of vacuum Einstein equations, but now with positive co cosmological constant. If you just calculate uh, the, the, the Ricci tensor of this metric, then you will see that Ricci of this metric is free uh, H square, where H is just this uh, constant here, which was this constant defining your quadric, right? So that, that was your, your the, the constant defining your quadric is just given by this one over H square. And, and then you will see that this H is related to the cosmological constant, namely the cosmological constant is equal to three times H square and it's positive. So the difference between the sitter and Minkowski is that it's, it's the first visible difference is that the sitter is a solution, a solution to the vacuum Einstein equations, but now is positive cosmological constant. Minkowski is a solution to Einstein equations with, with vacuum Einstein equations with zero cosmological constant. And maybe it is this co cosmological constant that matters that scries of Minkowski is, is, is null and, and, and uh, scry of the sitter is spacelike. And to, to formulate this, what I just have said, uh, I need to have a definition just to, to, to make it more formal. So let me make a definition, which is essentially a repetition of this, what is, what is a conformal compactification. So your definition is as follows. It is the definition that Penrose, again, it's Penrose's definition of something which is called asymptotically simple spacetime. So a smooth spacetime with metric G is asymptotically simple if there is a smooth manifold M hat with boundary script I, and a metric G hat and a smooth scalar function omega such that the, the space time is interior of this M hat. The metric on M hat is just related to metric G by omega. Omega is positive in M and it is zero on the boundary and its gradient is non-zero on, on the script I boundary. Uh, and every null geodesic in M has a future and past endpoint on this boundary. So that's what it means that M is asymptotically simple. So M is asymptotically simple, provided that there exists a conformal compactification of M in such a way that this boundary have this property that every null geodesic in M has a future and a past endpoint on, on the boundary. So Penrose, when, when Penrose introduced this definition, he immediately realized that actually it is too strong. Actually, the last condition is too strong to, for example, uh, include, include black holes to the picture, this space time which, 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 which include black holes to this picture. So he had to modify a bit this last condition and he introduced another notion which is called weakly asymptotically simple space time. I don't want to enter into this. There is, uh, there is relaxation of this last condition to, 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 to include space-time that are, that are asymptotically simple. Simply, you, 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 you want that this thing is only in some open set around, around, around um, the boundary. So you, 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 don't, you don't need too much. But in particular, every asymptotically, every weekly asymptotically simple space-time no, every asymptotically simple spacetime is weakly asymptotically simple. So I just uh, restrict to asymptotically simple. And with this definition, one has the following theorem is that the boundary of a weakly asymptotically simple spacetime satisfying Einstein equations with energy momentum tensor such that it trades is zero in the vicinity of the boundary. So if you if you have an asymptotically weakly simply spacetime satisfying Einstein equations like this with energy momentum tensor whose trace vanishes in the vicinity of the boundary, then the, this boundary is space-like if the cosmological constant is positive, null 
if it is zero and time like if it is negative. And that's essentially everything what I wanted to tell you today. What, what, we, what we will be heading to next time is to use this fact of this theorem about the solutions to Einstein equations with cosmological constant being positive. And why this? This is because these people tell me or astronomers tell me that our universe as it looks now is essentially having this cosmological constant positive. So if you want to apply all of this, what I wanted to say today to the cosmology, we have to consider this, this, this situation where, 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 where the sky of a space-time, which is just our universe, uh, is space-like. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Pavel. Questions, please. Thank you. Thank you, Pavel. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Pavel. Okay, good. So, uh, I feel I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm talking about these trivialities, but it is something that I needed. Just uh, have a question again, very basic. Yes. Do you hear me right? So wh why you say that all the solutions like Schwarzfeld here, wh wh why they actually solutions for vacuum? Where like the where, where are the singularities? Ah, that's a that's a good okay. That's a good point. That's a good point. That's a good point. So <laughs> yes, yeah, so Schwarzschild solution is Ricci flat everywhere except at singularity. So it is just like so when you when when you solve the equation, you are looking for a solution. For Ricci flatness, and then you get this solution, and then you discover that, that actually it is Ricci flat everywhere except in a point that it is singular. Okay, the and, same with Kerr. The singular points are in the boundary, or this singular point? No. Yeah. So you you get a solution which is just so. If you really would like to 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 to, to, to be mathematically precise. <coughs> So this Schwarzschild solution is just a solution to the Einstein equations with energy momentum tensor being delta function, okay? Delta function, right, uh, okay. This, this, the, same, the same with care. No, but like in your picture, this so solution. Might, so, but, but, but remember that the singularity, mm -hmm. Schwarzschild, it is a three-dimensional surface, right? So it is just like, so the, 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 the uh, and this three-dimensional surface has, has its uh, own um, causality, namely this space-like hypersurface, mm -hmm. right? On the other hand, Kerr singularity, mm -hmm. Kerr singularity is different because Kerr singularity is again a three-dimensional surface, but mm -hmm. now it is uh, time-like. Okay. So, so maybe you uh, can explain this picture. So, so there's. Uh, just uh, discontinuous uh, singularities here, right? Yeah, so, yeah. So, that, yeah. So, 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 somehow, if you if you really calculate this, what is what Kerr did, you will get you will get if you take a Kerr solution as it is obtained by Kerr, you will okay. get like like this uh, like, like 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 this picture from starting from here, this this. This, the okay, boom, 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 boom. So it, it is a picture consisting of one, two, three, four, five, six regions. So that's what you would get when looking at, at care solution as obtained by care. And then you, then there were people like Boyer and Linquist, and then their followers that just like try to maximally extend this solution to Einstein equations, and they were showing that. This, this pattern of these six regions, which are already in compactification, just can be prolonged up to infinity, okay? In which region we are now? Say it again. We are now. In which region? Uh, in I don't know, because- in any of it. Again, again, you, you are, you are, people are simply 
trying to extrapolate a solution that is just supposed to be considered as a local solution and want to go to global picture. And this global picture, I think that it doesn't have much, much to do with physics. This is why, for example, I hate cosmology because I say that, 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 <laughs> that, that, that physics is just a local science and talking about this, what's going on even in Moscow. <laughs> I, would not, I would like to know where we are now, in which region. Uh, uh, I'm not asking you about you should, you should, you should, just only, today, you only, where we are. Nisha, you should only believe that around rotating black hole, you have this picture and you shouldn't think about well, I understand that it is belief, but, any, any, but with, any, with uh, this belief. Yeah, so you can speculate. That, that's the, that is called cosmology. So you are, you are welcome, but I am the last person to be in. I will just tell you what, I, what people say about cosmology, but I, you should understand that I am not a strong believer or actually not a believer. So what, what, what people believe to? What people believe? I don't know, you should read some science fiction uh, novels. It is an <laughs> equal, equal footing of this what physicists do now or cosmologists do. To, uh, Pavel, may I, again, another question. So like you, you gave several examples of this compactification, but is there any kind of general theory about like when you can compactify? Yes, so there are, so there are books about this because you, would, you, you should assume something. You would like to understand, for example, you, would, you should assume how, 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 so everything is known about this, this, this asymptotically simple thing. But if it is not asymptotically simple and this force condition is relaxed, or you just remove the assumption about smoothness of these manifolds, then there, is, there are papers, there are books even about this, what is the smoothness structure of scries and stuff. It's just like, I don't want to enter this, okay? The, for, for the, there, is, there is a book of Beam and Ehrlicher, which is who are the most mathematical is the most mathematical book about about this uh, about this uh, uh, causal structure of four dimensional Lorentzian manifolds and all of this is discussed there how this how these compactifications go but I don't want to enter this because that's not what I need I wanted I, I had a humble uh, humble, uh, hum, hum, humble um, uh, desire of telling you what is in my paper with Meissner, and even this I cannot say before I, I just give you some 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 explanations of some basic facts. More questions. No. Um, maybe well st still like about like well uh, uh, Igor asked you about existence but I would like to ask about the uniqueness yeah so very good. like when they talk about this and uh, maximal analytic continuation so people say okay let's look to some nice coordinates right and in this coordinates you see reflection and so forth but then there can exist some other coordinates uh, but still it's it's a metric story right but in okay. conformal first, you first have, of all first of all uniqueness you see that if you multiply this omega function by any function which is non-vanishing, you will have an equally good thing, right? So it depends. Perhaps I think that they formulated some theorems about uniqueness, but you have to uh, you have to, to to formulate uniqueness. You should assume something, and all of this to just say all of this is just. First of all, I don't remember this. I don't know this. But definitely people did such things, okay? I repeat, Beam and Ehrlicher, that's a good book about this. The best book. Okay. Pavel, but multiplying by conformal factor doesn't change conformal structure. I mean, how unique is it conformally? I think that it's rather unique, but but don't ask me about this. Okay. You, I, I simply I simply tell you what what usually relativists do. Relativists just show 
the simplest possible examples how to make this compactification for a given thing. They, like a simple relativist, never care about uniqueness and stuff like this. Okay, but I, I know that the, such questions are asked, and I know that the answers are in the book of this beam and error. Okay, very good. And like Adam, what, what is what, the dimension uh, of uh, the curvature tensor of four dimensional? Uh, what do you mean? Space? How, how many components it has in four dimensions? Yeah, getting... modular SO31. Uh, what is the dimension? Okay. First of all, SO31 is six dimensional, right? Yeah, but okay, it acts uh, on. Uh, and then. The curvature uh, tensor. But uh, forget about this section. Then what, what is the dimension? Uh, okay. First of all, Riemann tensor in four in four dimensions has 20, 20 components. 20. 20 components. Six, six, yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. Ten, ah, com just... ten components, ten components of this of this Riemann tensor is in Ricci. So Ricci or energy momentum tensor has 10 components. So there are essentially 10 PDEs for Einstein equation. Yeah. And then the rest 10 components is the Weyl tensor. But Weyl tensor in, 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 in four dimensions, because of non-simplicity of, of, of this SO4 group, SO4C group, then this, this, this uh, uh, 10 components of Weyl can be grouped in some canonical way into five complex components. So there is essentially five. So there is there is there is 10 components of Ricci and five components of Weyl. So we have 10 real PDEs for Einstein equations, if you just think about it. But because of Bianchi identities, then there is some the system is overdetermined and some, you know. Conformally, uh, when we consider conformal space, it reduces dimensions. Yeah. So yes, conformal space. Yeah, because 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 the the conformal curvature out of the out of the Riemann, the only thing which is conformal there is vial. So there is only ten components there. But there is but but this vial is essentially the fundamental curvature of the conformal structure. So the fundamental curvature of the conformal structure, as they call in parabolic geometry, uh, harmonic curvature has 10 components. Whereas Riemannian geometry has uh, Riemann tensor of, of 20 components. Okay, thanks. So, so Pavel, what about like what you discussed last time uh, with dust and perfect fluid and yes. like, is it like also compactifiable? Yeah, so, so so that's 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 what I that's what I uh, wanted to see. yeah. So for example, you see here that this theorem that I gave at the very end, mm -hmm. they want that to to say something about causal structure of of scry, if you assume Einstein equations, then it is good to have the only thing you need. You need that the energy momentum tensor close to scry has mm -hmm. has uh, has uh, uh, has uh, vanishing yeah. trace. Yeah. So, but but usually what, in physics, what you have you have you have you have your matter somewhere. Matter is essentially localized, far away from matter. There is vacuum. So so the so the solutions usually that you are looking for is such that that you have energy momentum tensor which is localized some except cosmology because in cosmology matter you have everywhere that's what they assume but in in, in usually in physics usually in physics you just want to describe some phenomenon which is local for example, a star so a star has has matter content within the star but beyond the star surface you have just uh, energy momentum tensor is zero so somehow somehow all of in physical situations these cries essentially are such that you can assume this asymptotical, asymptotical simplicity with even more than trace of t being zero, but even t being zero far away from, 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 from these things. So, so that's 
And as I, as I said, this entire story about these conformal compactifications is not some mathematical, mathematically, uh, mathematical object <coughs> taught by mathematicians because he was thinking, oh, it's good to do something like this. What mm -hmm. I, I started this entire story with motivations of Penrose, why he did it. He simply wanted to see how the, <coughs> how he wanted to see what's going on in such places where null geodesics end. So he needed to add these compactifications to get described. And then he discovered, for example, that that this null the, 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 these this areas where null geodesics end can have different causality. In, yeah, okay. I, I just missed first 15 minutes, so sorry about it. Okay. I, I, it, it is not, it is not, yeah. uh, okay, Penrose is a mathematician, but he, his motivation are very physical. So he was not making an empty theory for nothing or just saying, okay, I can do it for Schwarzschild, I can do it for this. He simply wanted to, to, to add this, mm -hmm. this place where null geodesics ends because he wanted to analyze physics there. He wanted to an analyze radiation and radiation goes to infinity along null geodesics. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think that, that thank you very much. And I'm sorry that I am just boring. <laughs>